Okay, so welcome everybody. This is uh, KCP Community Call, July 12th, 2022. And as usual, the issue is visible now. So if you have topics you want to talk about today, please add some. At the moment we have the usual uh, hygiene for the issues and we have two more topics we want to talk about. And a third one, perfect. And the fourth one. Looks like we get a super busy and productive meeting. All right, so as usual, the, the issues we do at the end, um, Paul has planning. I would suggest we also move that more to the end. Paul, is this okay? Yep, no problem. And then we have three more topics. Um, first one is maybe short. It's basically a shout out. So Sergius started this document just to understand testing and how we, uh, which, which users are used to connect to which components, especially in the test end-to-end -end sharded end-to-end -end test. And this is what came out. Uh, I think you can ignore much of the, the, the text behind. I just want to point out a few things which might be helpful when you start debugging. Uh, this pretty special end-to-end -end CI job. It's special because we have the front property. So there's one component more than elsewhere. And the test is running here at the top. So the top right, I think you, you cannot see my cursor, right? So if I point. Yeah, we can, yeah. We, we can, yeah. You can see the cursor? Okay, anyway, so I, I opened here in Google Doc easier. So I can select. So here's the test. And the main connection, all the test use is basically this effort. So it connects to the front proxy and only then it connects to the shard, to the KCP server. And of course, there are more connections, like um, the tests connect, uh, some of them connect directly for reasons. And I think one error is missing. Um, some tests also connect to the sync curvature workspace here. But basically, keep in mind, this is a connection, it's the main connection. Yes, plus I have to fix this drawing <laughs> because some of the errors are even wrong. So, like, it, even like when you see after the conversation, right, uh, it's quite a complex setup and there is quite a lot of contexts and cube configs involved. So it was very confusing. Chris? I would like to see this to be turned into a markdown maybe eventually. Yeah, I see the Sinker virtual workspace is basically parallel with the KCP front proxy. Yeah, so. this is maybe not correct for the test actually. It's running inside, but I think you run it external, right? So you have the setup. Chris. The in in the yeah in my tests and, and in our that I've stood up the sinker and yeah. the TCP root shard are actually in the same pod, so they're both internal in the front proxy proxies to both of the yeah. But for the for the test cases, it just doesn't make any difference. They run the same way. They connect the same way. All right, so this is mostly what I want to say. Uh, maybe just highlight those colored texts here. They are super important, and they they are the reason why the connections are the way they are. So white cards are completely disabled to the front proxy. If a workload wants to connect via white cards to API exports, for example, it has to go through the green uh, path here to the Sync virtual workspace or the API export virtual workspace. The same way, if the test case wants to wildcard, uh, do wildcard requests against the, sh um, the KCP, but not going to the virtual workspace, like when you test the virtual workspace, you want that, you have to go directly to the, to the shard. So this is also a reason why this error exists. So keep those in mind. Um, the arrow here and also the, the, the vertical one, they are privileged. So you have to be a system admin, system master to be able to even use this feature. And um, yeah, that's different to the secured authorized green white cards on the website for the virtual workspace. But those are the reasons when you notice you want white cards, it doesn't work. 
you need a different client. All right. But I will convert it to a markdown and also maybe enhance the syntax. I think it's worth having this in some documentation yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And also this, I mean, this topology is more or less the one we, which we will have in production, right? So it's even important for that to understand. Everything else we had before is basically a toy we run on our desktops and our notebooks. But this one is what we will see mm -hmm. in a real setup. All right, that was my monologue. So yes. Right, so uh, yeah, one thing I'm I'm working on the system masterless KCP front front CPR. So I'm constantly doing one step forward and constantly chasing also main with changes. So after rebasing today with a change that I believe merged on yesterday, I believe that's the testing wrappers of cluster client calls. Um, I think something's broke. Essentially, if you're using now, um, I think the, the biggest change from this PR um, 1376 that I referenced here in the um, issue, the biggest change that it uh, was that you're using a context now instead of a dedicated method to invoke calls against a cluster uh, against the client to for instance create a cluster workspace so yeah maybe you can go down and show an example yeah here we go this is a good example um, so previously you've been using cluster client dot cluster set the cluster name and then you know within that cluster you did stuff um, instead you what you're doing now is you omit the dot cluster you pass it a context um, with the hope that you know the create call in this case a secret is being um, executed within the context of the given cluster and this is as far as I understood to ease sort of like the compatibility with um, yeah playing cute vanilla clients however it broke because <laughs> um, when you do the create uh, the implementation underneath create um, actually doesn't really consider the context at least not in my tests um, so I'm not sure how this could have passed, but uh, just to raise awareness, Stefan, I don't know if um, the original um, contributor, Varsha, um, can have a peek at a picture on Slack, but if not, maybe we can sync or anybody else can have a look. Because um, I think it's. So it's I have a stupid question you know, along these lines. Um, I was looking at um, in, regarding the issue of client side uh, sharding. Um, the implementation of the, well, the interface for, uh, in, in regular kube, the REST interface, uh, is not actually in terms of interfaces. It's, there's a particular struct that uh, things uh, go through. So it's not like I can provide an alternate implementation. Um, there's, there's a fixed implementation uh, that, that I ran into. Um, did I miss something? Uh, is, or this, if not, is this something that we've started it's discussing? It's changing at the moment. So there has been work. So Varsha is here, she can talk about that. Um, this is changing right at the moment. And I think some changes went in. So do you want to yeah. explain, Varsha? Sure. So the idea behind this was uh, instead of using a dot cluster, uh, we were scoping the context and changing the configs. So there were two things which we're doing, uh, either passing the cluster name through the context or modifying the rest config itself to include the cluster name in the host and then sending it through the cluster round tripper. So the uh, cluster round tripper uh, basically modifies the uh, host and then passes on the request. So yeah, I so this was just a uh, uh, PR to check out if things work in the API export controller. And uh, I think there were a lot of flakes in CI, but then eventually it passed. But I can look into the test, which is failing. And one another drawback of uh, this particular thing was the discovery client uh, didn't use a cluster scope context. So it was creating a context somewhere inside in the implementation. So that was another thing where we had a workaround in which we were modifying uh, the host uh, of the config and then sending it uh, directly. 
So, uh, but yeah, I can look into the test, uh, which is failing and dig more into it. And I also create an issue of the list of uh, controllers and list of instances in KCP, which we need to modify to make the client calls cluster scope at least. So what was it that broke when this merged? Uh, from what I recognized is the request URL is not properly constructed. So like when you give it like today, literally in the test that I have in my open PR, I referenced it. Uh, when you do a create and you give it a cluster context, essentially, um, the URL will just have the base path and will not have the actual cluster appended to the URL that you gave it to. That's the symptom that I'm observing. And so it all the right. So that that's yeah. At so least the export, that's, uh, the export controller does not create. Could this be the reason that we were just lucky? But anyway, I, I think it's something to explore. I mean, somebody has to debug and see. I mean, I, I think it might be local to you because I had PRs merged this morning and stuff, and they were all fine. Okay, yeah, that's what also what I wanted to know if anybody else recognized this. Um, Varsha, maybe we too could sync out of band maybe tomorrow um, and maybe even have a live debug session. Not sure what time zone you're in. Sure, I'm in BSD, but uh, yeah, definitely we can sync and uh, check the uh, issue out. Okay, cool. And thanks, Steve, for the confirmation that at least some parts work. So maybe I just hit some code path that um, was missed. Okay, thanks. Thanks. And we have another topic by David. Yeah, just, just a heads up. So that um, the, whole, the main and first part of the home mode spaces request was merged uh, last week. And so it introduced the, the new kubectl workspace tilde here syntax uh, that I'm showing here. Uh, yeah, now this one, uh, as you see in the, in the comment. And um, based on this, Yes, thank you, Stefan. And based on this, um, we could go one step further and change a bit the semantic of the WS command to better match the typical CD semantics that, that you know the WS command already looks like. Mainly because now we have a home and, and a first class citizen home concept. We could think about having the WS without parameters being exactly the same as WS tilde because on some keyboards, it's quite very painful to <laughs> type this. And then it would bring you to the homework base and keep the other ones ws dot instead. For now, ws without any parameters just um, types you, I mean, returns the current workspace. So instead of that, uh, just do alt cd. If you want to see the current workspace, you do ws dot and then go to the to, to, to the parent dot dot and to the previous uh, hyphen. So it's just a small change that is, you know, not compatible, but I mean, not also quite intuitive, it seems. So I open this issue. Uh, if anyone has comments or maybe, you know, we can start some sort of informal vote uh, with plus one or minus one. And and based on that, I would implement the change if there is agreement. agreement. Any? Any questions? I have one comment. So the question I ask myself in those cases, if we change it and think about in six months, will we miss the old behavior? Will the new one be strange or is it just normal? Like if there had never been the case that WS just prints the current workspace, but we, we had that from the beginning. What, how would it feel in six months? Yeah, the thing, I mean, to, to me, I mean, my feeling at least is is that this one is quite um, intuitive. And by the way, having WS without anything type the current value is also not very intuitive. I mean, I mean we could have, you know, double, of course, WS current or something like that is quite explicit. It, it shows it. But WS without any parameter can be anything, in fact. So, I mean, it's, it's just a convention to me. It's at least this way, it, it looks like something which is well known for everyone. And that's my feeling. But that's the goal of the issue mainly uh, to allow discussion on this and, and, and reach uh, some agreement. 
well, I'll just say it out loud, right? I mean, if you're trying to make it look like directory stuff in Unix and Linux, you know, when I want to know the current working directory, I don't do CD dot, I do PWD. Sure, sure. We, we can add that as well. <laughs> and then, then it's just an alias. It's quite easy to do. Of course, we have to define until until which limit we, we want to, to mimic the CD. <laughs> Well, and actually, that's, that's my point, right? Because with KubeCuddle, every new thing is another plugin. Um, so I'm not sure this is the right path to go down. Maybe we need we to be thinking about it a little differently. We have two plugins already. So a third one does not make a difference, I think. Right. But the point if, is if you want in, in Linux I mean... and Unix, right? You don't yeah. have two or three commands. You've got a pile of commands, right? Yeah. Do we want to have a pile of plugins? So, so again, I think in six months, could you get used to to type ws dot? Maybe it's the most normal thing of the world in six months for everybody. When do you need to to get the current? If you want to know. Database. Where are you at the moment? Right, but like, what's the? We need something for go to home, obviously, and this will be pretty common. And people want something they can easily remember. I'm just wondering how how common is it for you to need to know where you are? Because like. You, you get told every time you change, right? When you say dot dot, right. it will tell you. Yeah. So, but, but dot is there, so we can use dots. Um, but also, like, if, if you're going to use, like, if you want to know where you are, what's what, what, like, what question are you answering? Am I in the one that I want to be? In which case, just type the thing to go to the one you want to be. Yeah, exactly. And if you type dot, that means I want to go where I am already. <laughs> and oh, then it, it does there's the same. Lots of places, there, there's lots of reasons, different reasons why people want to know where they're at. They may have just forgotten. They may want to. How often do you want to know which namespace your context is in? Pretty yeah. often. I, guess I almost never do that. I mean, it depends on your persona, right? Like some of the projects that I've internally, they're spread across. Like different installations are in different namespaces. And I do not want to screw up and accidentally. Command right, but what I do is instead of asking which one am I in and then using implicit commands, I explicitly say like create in this namespace or whatever. Yeah, there is, I mean, the homework space is precisely just one case where you want to be where you are exactly because when you do WS tilde or WS without anything here, then you are brought to, let's say, root users, bucket one, bucket two, and username. And then this. A precise logical cluster name you didn't know before. I mean, it's it's calculated for you. It comes from the server side. So it, at least in this case, it's useful to have this feedback to know where I am. Because if I want to distribute a sub workspace based on this one to someone I shared it with, uh, then I'm interested in having uh, you know the, this information. So it, I mean, this is one of the cases where you might be interested. But I agree that it's not. Yes, I, I think what I'm saying is the existing queue control like semantic is extremely powerful, right? Like if I, like Chris is saying, if I want to edit something or delete something or create something and I know it has to be in a particular workspace I, or in a particular namespace, I add that flag. And if the YAML I passed in doesn't match, I get an error. Yeah, I mean, the whole like look it up and then implicitly use it. Like that's a little bit less powerful. Yeah, look, I mean, you can, make, you can make the exact same argument for command line operations. Yeah, guys, there's, there's a very really basic user experience design issue here, right? The current workspace is an important bit of state, and it should be easily discoverable. Yeah, I, I don't think there should be any question about the fact that it should be easily discoverable. So the question okay, is I'm not, not saying you should be able to figure it out. I guess I'm just saying, like, the way that it works with dash dash namespace is, I think, unarguably good. And if we could, I don't think we can do something like queue control apply dash dash cluster like that's not going to happen right but this is a different discussion you're opening here so i think the user experience per se has been discussed many many times so we're really talking about dot current whatever the, the keyword is the subcommand 
and whether we use WS alone without any parameter for something else. Like everybody who used this command for months has to relearn something. That's the question. Do we want that? Is it worth it? Just coming in from the outside, I think you know. I think you've got more, much more future ahead of you than you have past behind you. So I, I would optimize for you know what you think is best, and not worry too much yeah. about history. Yeah, that's my feeling too. Like in six months, we will have forgotten. It's just yeah. At least, guess. at least we we already have the dot dot. So I mean, obviously, you already have a reference to uh, you know shortcuts used in CD. Uh, and folder shortcuts. So the, the the meaning of dot should be quite obvious for anyone knowing the meaning of dot dot. Yeah, if we're going for familiarity by analogy, then don't just capriciously break the analogy. Just you know, make it com complete it, right? So which I think is what the proposal is. And, in some sense, but, I don't think it matters a whole lot so long as the information is available, because I suspect that people that use this often may just jam it into a prompt, which is what I would probably do once it stabilizes anyway. And, and, have, David, I have one suggestion, maybe when you change it in the PR, when you just say WS and you go to home, print a line which tells the user, hey, this has changed. If you want to go back where you have been, use this, uh, use the dash command, something like that. Yeah, I mean, um, and then people okay. will learn quickly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because by the way, we, we when you do the WS without anything, you you get the where you are. So at least you can check that you are not in the place you yeah. you you were expecting. Sure, I can add this this sort of warning. So I, I think the ask is for everybody comment on the issue. If you yeah. feel for it, if you don't care, don't comment. And if you don't like it, just comment as well. Exactly. All right. So what else do we have? Yes, end to end. It's painful at the moment. Chris. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to highlight that I've made Simple code changes, um, adding a flag uh, was one of them, and then just updating an endpoint. And the the sinker test seems to be flaky, but also I've noticed um, site faults and core dumps. And mm -hmm. those have happened in multiple different tests, but I don't have any symbols that are baked into the core to know exactly what the state of the stack was at the time. So what we changed to Sunka has infinite QPS now or something. Steve, do you know what any changed? I think that's it, right? I'm not sure that that is a cause. No, so I, I, it's just a, a major change which might cause loads. That's just a hypothesis. Yes. I'm not sure. That has been unmuted. Yeah. So one of the one of the core dumps was apparently during the cluster workspace shard test. Another one was during cluster workspace. What do you mean when you say core dump? Like like it's site faulted. Like an actual site fault? Like an actual site fault. Like there's a core Can fault you, really produced. Is Second. Is it possible for you to share these? Um I have looks like system D hasn't cleaned up all of them. I have the one a core file from just a little bit ago. So. Um, on the other EDE front, we recently made it so, uh, so like one source of a lot of our flakes was uh, a series of go routines that would sit in the background and query health and readiness of KCP during the tests. For some completely un unknown reason, the etcd would go unready every once in a while for a little bit. It doesn't seem to ever affect the actual correctness of the tests. Uh, so I just made it only fail if it gets two in a row. And that seems to hopefully have made it much less likely. Um, 
we'll keep thinking about how to fix that CD, but if it's not actually leading to any problems, I don't think we should be wasting time retesting. Okay. And everybody who has time, please try to pick a flag and try to debug it. I think we have been better a few days ago, but now it's really back to bad state. All right, so I would then give the voice to Paul about planning. All right, that is a, a pretty good segue into figuring out the themes and schedule for 0 0.7. So we've got a lot of items remaining open in 0 0.6. The next thing that we're going to do on that uh, in maybe tomorrow or so is go through them. Anything that we don't think is going to finish up this week, we'll go ahead and move it to 0 0.7 unless it's critical. But I think we should probably make the goal of tagging at the end of this week or on Monday for 0 0.6, just so we can call that complete. Um, so for 0 0.7, uh, what really means is that we should focus on finishing what we've already started, because we've got a lot of things in flight, and preparing any designs for 0 0.8, so we can get ahead of those discussions where people have time. But it does sound like maybe priority over design even would be stability for our, our test system, if uh, mm. people agree with that. Um, there is a list in our work packages document of things that are in flight that we should uh, swarm around and try and finish up where we can. So my suggestion would be that if the group agrees that we team up on these topics and uh, help them over the finish line. For folks that need other items to work on, there are three new topics to talk about. Uh, we do have some other contributors who are looking at networking, but it's still valuable if anyone is interested in that area to, to sync up on that. But API evolution and inverse syncing were ones that we know we want to start thinking about in the 0 0.8 timeframe. So if we can get designs done in 0 0.7, gives us a little bit more discussion time as a group to talk about what the MVP is versus the long-term strategy there. So actual tangible steps are, is going to be we're going to filter out 06, close anything that finishes Friday, move the rest to 07. We need names on any of the themes here that you want to team up and work on to focus getting the, the top list over the finish line. Otherwise, flakes, finally design. So which means people of the new topics should start meetings, right? Design meetings as usual. Put some names, invite some people. Yep, exactly. Do we want to go through this theme list? Is that worth it here? Yeah, we can maybe do a short pitch. We still have time, so let's do that. OK. For location and workspaces, is Xi'an on? I think Xi'an and David and, and uh, maybe Joachim have been working on that. So if you want to describe just kind of where it is and what's next. Yeah, I, I don't think he's here. Sorry, I, I missed your last sentence. Yes. If you have any uh, maybe description of where things are and what the next steps are that we'd want to accomplish to, to close it out. Yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there is quite some work in you know, separating location workspaces from where um, real resources from the workspaces that contains the real resources for now i mean until now uh, both were quite the same so we have to update uh, things on on the sync of virtual workspace i assume uh am i saying no. yeah uh, meaningful things <laughs> Stefan? it makes sense just motivation the motivation is um there are different owners of locations and some targets, which means we will have different location workspaces, like bring your own mm -hmm. kind of workspaces where the, the clusters and the local data center are, and then there's a, a public service. And you might want to schedule your workloads to both, like one namespace to uh, bring your own clusters in the basement and the others into the cloud. Mm -hmm. And to make that possible, um, the APIs have to match. 
between those location workspaces. And this means that the APIs must be yeah, basically decoupled from the locations. And the keyword here is just location workspaces. So you have a compute workspace where the API are defined, so like the Kubernetes APIs, deployments and, and stuff. And then you can attach any number of location workspaces where you can put your own clusters. There's not too much design from the written down, but we have good ideas of what we want. But I think we need some more design sessions for details. There are some yeah. tricky questions. Yeah, and then the, the, the management of the impacts of the already uh, of, of the existing behavior. Yeah, the labels and annotations we have today, a number of them have to be generalized or made more qualified, like having workspace names inside or something like that. That's a topic, location workspaces. All right. Next one is quota. I'm not sure there's so much to say about that. Andy has prototypes of cube quota, but they're still not completely there yet. So this will continue. I think Andy will just continue this work. Same for sharding. Uh, Lukas is doing the first steps deep in the server binary and adding flex and adding, adding flexibility. Adding a second shard, that's basically the goal, and fix whatever comes up. Um, this will not be the super scalable sharding, but it will be the starting point to go or to scale horizontally. So there's lots of work and the RPRs already merged and some are coming. And does this include as well the client side part and the, the design of the client side, you know, working on with several URLs possibly? Uh, not yet, not yet. The, the, the idea is, the plan is the workspace scheduler will by default schedule to the root chart. So everybody who just creates a workspace, this will land on root. And in end to end, we will have a way to schedule workspaces under our control to the second okay. shard and see what happens. That's how we want to attack that. that. Mm. And then we, when this is validated, then we can start uh, make, it, make it more flexible and then uh, tackle the client side. Yes, right? so API, API bindings was the first uh, obstacle he, he hit. Like there are no API bindings, so there are no shadow CRDs, so you cannot mm. list even cluster workspaces on the second shard. So those things will hit us and we will hit those issues and try yeah. to solve them. That's sharding. Pot access through reverse proxy. This is work Antonio is on. I'm not exactly sure where he is uh, in this topic. So we have to chat. I think he's not here. He's on PTO at the moment. So this is still open, ongoing. This is Sean's work, Sean here. All right, yes, Sean. I see you speaking, but I cannot hear anything. I'm not sure, maybe the microphone doesn't work. Um, we talked about that earlier today. So basically, there are improvements in the controllers we have built. This is it's critical at the moment that uh, the resource controller, which labels stuff, is the same as API binding. So there's Hello? good work to be done. Hello, now I hear you. OK, yay. Um, I did update the tracking epic and added uh, like four issues that I think probably should be for 0 0.7. Um, effectively, this is a refactor. The big one is this refactor that Stefan and I talked about today, which is we want to separate out the determining of permission claims are added, removed, or um, invalid uh, into one controller, and um, the actual labeling of resources uh, into a different controller. Um, uh, that's the big one. And then the rest of them are smaller ones that um, are just going to be like stuff that we can add on to. So. Uh, and making sure that we do some end-to-end -end tests to make sure certain things can happen. Uh, so one of the other big pieces is going to be um, t 
tying together the exported permission claims to the binding permission claims to let uh, a user know that there's permission claims the export has that you haven't accepted or things like that. So that's the those are the two big ones, I think, for 0.7. Thanks. Does that jive, Stefan, with what we kind of talked about? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. That was yeah. the goal with a small pitch. All right, next one. Uh, that's David's work. Yeah, mainly um, bringing back the, the transformations that were shown uh, months ago uh, as, as demos. Um, step by step, um, basic transformations first, then uh, using those transformations to manage Sinker specific views of KCP objects that the main point so that we can provide us a more, you know, consistent and sure, sure foundation for sort of coordination controllers or the, you know, the feature that would be awaited by a number of, of external uh, actors, I mean, from KCP. Uh, you know, for example, you know, to uh, coordinate ingresses or, or, or spread uh, um, deployments or all this this work uh, all these cases where we need to maintain um, a precise state of a, a kcp resource which is which has variants across sinkers which is not synced with exactly the same status for example on each on each sinker so the transformation framework would be the base for this and which would then be the base for for uh, tackling the coordination controller uh, more general work. Thank you. And then we have three new topics. API evolution. So I wrote it down. At some point, we want to go to better one, v one better one. And I think we want to avoid conversions if possible. Basically, conversions they are always hard to do. We know that from Cube, and we are not sure it's really the right vehicle for KCP. If we can avoid them and add another more flexible migration mechanism, this would help. So we have to discuss those things. There are some, some explorations from some months ago. Mm -hmm. We have to talk about those and see what we can do and how it would look like when we implement that. It doesn't mean that we finish that this release, but we have to start, I think. All right, networking. I'm not sure is anybody here, probably not. So networking, somebody speaks. Oh. So what is missing at the moment? So we are talking about networking in one cluster. That's the first step. Even that is broken at the moment. When you use a service in a, in a deployment, the deployment by conformance of cube can assume certain things like that that the pod can reach a service IP, that DNS works, like it can resolve service uh, uh, domain names, and those depend on namespaces. Namespaces are mapped in a physical cluster, so they are different than on the KCP side, which means the KCP user has no idea how the DNS name will look like which means basically what we have at the moment is not conformant. So we need some kind of mapping uh, from DNS names. Um, I think also the um, downwards API, so that you can map in namespace, for example, in, into an environment variable. These things are broken. So we need to extend the syncer probably to do that, to do the mapping, the rewriting, and some way for DNS. So I just heard the, the, the word um, core DNS plugin. I'm not sure what it is or the, whether it's a solution. That's what I heard from networking folks that we probably need that. So everything around enabling the single cluster use case. This is networking MVP. This is not multi cluster inside of location and it's not multi location. It's really just a super basic case. All right, and the last one, David, maybe again, you can talk about that. 
Yeah, that, there are some some cases, obviously, um, that were um, that you know emerged or were spotted for uh, in thinking about storage use cases, where uh, it might be uh, required to pull some objects that you know um, that are created on physical clusters. Uh, up to the KCP level, so that they are known, and then can be possibly think of you know storage migration, for example, PVs, PVCs, um, uh, then would be you know pulled up at the KCP level and then synced back uh, on a distinct um, um, physical cluster. So I mean, it's a sort of you know we have to design and also to 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 uh, define the limits of uh, inverse thinking, which would allow in some really specific and well-defined use cases, uh, pulling uh, data the just the way the, the way the inverse way of what we we usually do, which is from downstream physical clusters to to upstream, you know, or uh, KCP uh, level. So that's the whole you know area that we have to first. Uh, explore design and and then uh, define the implementation at least the minimal one so pots and physical volumes right so those are the examples yeah. probably yeah i mean at least the first ones yeah. all right and there's the last one which showed up uh, steve i assume you are on that yes and okay. it's not entirely clear to me if this requires us to redo all of the cluster name stuff or not. Because um, we're not storing it in that CD and continuing to use the deprecated field for now should probably be fine. Whatever so, brings us to the next revision, we can do yeah. it in two steps. That's fine. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, yeah. so much about pitches. So Paul, what are the next steps? Yep, so as usual, put your names beside the topics that you're already working on. The hope here is that since a lot of the in-flight items don't require a lot of design discussion, that we can have a three-week cycle on this and finish up on August 5th. What I hope it also lets us do is that as we have these three weeks of design, we can have the smaller meetings with uh, focus groups, but then we can also bring those designs back to these calls to talk about them and get feedback in a more high bandwidth way, because it has been hard for folks to follow uh, when we design items right now. Um, so hopefully that'll help our sharing. If we're able to do that and finish up on August 5th, then that puts uh, 0 0.8. We can go from August 8th to uh, the 2nd, and that gives us a full four week again, and we'll be back on the, our four week cycle. Thanks. Any comments, further topics on planning? Or well, is anything missing? I mean, is anybody wanting or planning to work on something which is not here? How about the priority and fairness stuff, Mike? Do you want to give an update on that? Um, yeah, I haven't had time to work much on it. Um, I do also have a colleague that's interested in it. So I hope we can make some progress for uh, 0 0.7. Cool. So we should put it here as well, I guess. All right. So and our further planning topics, I would switch to the usual issue hygiene. So we have 11 new issues. And yeah, they are sorted reversely. So here's the oldest one. Steve had a comment, maybe you know background. I think it was 
like based on the way that we documented this stuff, what they're like what they've done locally just doesn't make sense. Oh, I see. Like you can't just like restart KCP under a new host name without changing where the shard thinks it is. But at the same time, I'm not really sure what how to help people doing this stuff. Right? So I'm just reading um, certificates which are pre-generated by KCP. Is this about that topic? Or is it about any kind of certificates? Because I, I think our certificate generation is intentionally pretty constrained. If you want more advanced multi-IP, multi-host name certs, then you have to use something external. So I move it to TBD. Um, I'm not sure whether there's consensus. That's even a PR, so see if you can take a look what's going on there and maybe try to help. So I think he's a colleague of Mike, right? I'm, I have no idea what's going on here. And I don't know what we okay. do with certificates. Somebody who has an idea might be. Yeah, again, what was the question? It's just your colleague who opens this discussion here about certificates. Not opened, actually, it's something else, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't recognize the name who opened it. Paolo is a colleague of mine. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody can help there, please take a look. 1452. It's TBD. It's not an identified issue, I think. So next one. Yeah, that's a topic, David, right? So the one you talked about. Uh, yes, this one is a follow-up, in fact, of, of the homework spaces. And it's zero I seven. Think, um, it's yes, blocker. I'm working on it today, so it should be available as a peer in the in maybe tomorrow. Okay. Next one, something about versions and Git tree. There have been changes, so I'm not sure it's even still valid. So I would put it to TBD. Maybe it's a bug. I know about CLI, something about CLI. Do we have a... How you compiled it? Could be. Oh, was a topic about make, right? Steve, can you answer about your make install topic? Maybe this helps. All right, next one. This is solved. No, it's not. This is a DNS topic about P clusters. Yeah, that's that's the topic. I think so. It's I think it's an experience blocker and it's transparent multi cluster. And I think it's zero seven. I would put it here. It's a goal, I think, to solve that. Next one. Um, Chris, this is something for you. You looked into this topic, I think. External host name yeah. and how it's pushed through the stack. Yeah, and I think this may be this may be intentional because we have one set of certs that are self sound certs for internal communication, and then another set for things that come in through the front proxy. Mm 
Yeah, so I, I tagged you here. You can take a look maybe. Okay. Yeah, at some point I used to locally, at least when debugging, to use the uh, um, external host uh, and point to you know localhost or 127.001. And it used to work. And more recently, when I did that, I had a, a certificate problem. And I was wondering, maybe there is a problem in the order of the bootstrap uh, that the external host name is 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 not completely set up uh, when we generate the certificates. Maybe there is something to search here as well. I didn't test recently. Yeah, Chris, you saw this provider construct. Maybe that's related in the admission. Yeah, could be. Sync, uh, it's mine actually. Sync against root workspace. Yeah, I, I, I tried that and it failed. So basically, when you start a KCP for main branch, you are you only have the root uh, workspace, which has all APIs, so you can start using TMC. It does not make, make much sense in production uh, setups, but um, for playing, it's probably important because people start like that. So I think it's not good. So I got it experience blocker for that reason, that people who try out KCP might hit that uh, when playing through the first example. So is something related, is broken. Is it yeah. related to the fact that we don't have the default workspace? Yeah, but we shouldn't have it. TMC should work also in root. Oh. And if it, if it doesn't, we have to remove the API binding. Hmm. So it's a bug. I'm not sure how urgent it is, but something to look into. Could also be that uh, we miss a cluster workspace because who doesn't have one? Maybe we need it somewhere. Could I be? Yeah, this is uh, from my personal wish list that Synca provides status updates much earlier than when it's ready. At the moment when a CI breaks, you start reading logs and try to understand where it broke, why we could report status. And it looks like somebody wants to work on that, that's cool. So still TBD. That's an epic, I guess. Lots of steps. I, I assign you, I assume. It's OK. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, this are the list of controllers and places where we need to modify uh, the client yeah. calls. So it's repo helps, it's client. I'm not sure we have something like that. And I would call it an epic with so many tab tasks. Sounds like an epic. Is this something you try to finish in 07? Yeah, I can uh, work on this. Okay, so let's just move it to 07 then. Cool. Thanks. Next one. Maybe so. That's also just a reminder, it seems. Sean, that's the one you, you mentioned, right? Just a subtask. Correct, yeah. It's CO7, what else? Oh, API okay. exports. Sorry, I didn't do the labeling yet. I can I can just go through that if you don't. If you yeah. Want to. Based on yeah, I, I take it already. That's fine. OK. OK, two more to go. Same kind, I guess. Oh, it's yeah. a test case. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. It's just a. Okay, and the last one. That's a topic that 
David presented, I guess, 07, David? Uh, since reason neighboring, I think we should be have an agreement this time. Okay. What is the label about plugin maybe? I don't see it. We had one. All right. I think we are through. We have still two minutes. So this should be empty. Perfect. All right, so everybody gets two minutes back. So there's no other topic. Thanks, everybody, and see you next week. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.